What's up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And today I am joined by Michael from Michael Miracles Yoga. And Michael, for my audience out there who does not know you, can you please just introduce yourself and let them know what you're all about? Hi uh, audience, my name is Michael <laughs> Miracles. I'm coming from Pittsburgh. I've been a yoga teacher for over six years now and um, it's been a really, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to sum it up all in one sentence, but it's been a journey that's really helped improve my experience of life and now more and more helping me to bring that light of awareness to other people or helping them find it for themselves more than they are. So awesome. So, so I teach yoga, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been teaching for six years. How long have you been doing yoga, like, in total? Uh, I took my first class a little uh, about 10 and a half years now. Okay. And then you just, you just took the class and fell in love with it. And you're like, I need to teach this to others. Well, um, the first time I did it, I, I was, um, in a, in a particular circumstance in my life where uh, a girlfriend and I had moved from Pittsburgh. We drove all the way across country to try to set up in Hollywood. Okay. And, uh, so we were out there, I was out there for about nine weeks and I came back to Pittsburgh again but to play. I was, I'm a musician too, to play a show. Okay. And uh, she abruptly broke up with me. So uh, uh, when I went back to get my things, I I had tried it one time while I was out there, and then I I was I was distraught. Like I was having real trouble doing anything. I was crying in public. I yeah, yeah. Anything. And uh, yeah, so the only thing I was able to do, I mean, at the time, I like tried to drink away my my thoughts. I tried to drink away my you know, whatever, smoke, drug away my. TV away, watch as much TV to just get out of it. And like nothing was, nothing was working. And yeah. uh, I would turn to those things in the past to, you know, mm -hmm. get out of my head. Um, but so when I was out there trying to, you know, deal with the whole thing, I ended up trying that free yoga class again. And at the end of the class, when we're laying in final resting pose, Shavasana, mm -hmm. uh, I, for the first time, I really felt like, oh, I felt, I felt a little bit of relief from my mental anguish mm. and, um, i was like wow there's something to this so then with my tail behind my legs went back to pittsburgh and uh i was already like for a few years you know trying to do the gym thing trying to run and stuff and was, you know somewhat stay in shape mm -hmm. or get in shape in the first place and when i came back to pittsburgh i found more of a you know a studio environment because one in hollywood was in a park so it was like you know more of a free class and then in the yeah. studio it so it became like this huge physical thing for me at first. Mm. This is a long way of telling the story, but uh, soon after I started to do that hot yoga, and I'm like, well, this is more than any other physical <laughs> that I've ever done. You know, like I would go to the gym and be like, okay, I'm doing chest today, I think. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, by the end, you know, by the end of those classes, I was just like, oh, oh my God. And, uh, in a way, I think that's really what I wanted and what I needed at that point was to like sometimes, or not even sometimes, but I think a lot of the time, a lot of us are disconnected from our bodies, mm. and that is how we're disconnected to our minds. Yeah. So I was definitely get disconnected to both, but away from the path in for me. And that's why I think yoga, especially when it's still held with, with the uh, philosophies behind it mm -hmm. and your teaching. And a lot of yoga classes are just focus on the physical, you know, which is a fitness class, which, you know, it's, it's always, it's good. It's a good thing to be moving every day, no matter how. You do yeah. It. Yeah. And like real quick, like that's, it's, it's interesting too. Cause I, one of my questions was going to be like, how did you get into yoga? Because, uh, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a big meditator. I haven't tried yoga yet. And I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute, but like, sure. I, I often find that, you know, so many people, you know, they, they come into things like yoga or meditation, or um, I'm also in recovery from drug and alcohol addiction. Like, like when we, when we reach this like extreme point of suffering, you know what I mean? And like something that I try to do, and I don't know if you try to do this as a yoga teacher too, is like try to get people to start doing this before they reach that point of just severe suffering. Like, do you find that when you're, when you have new students coming in, like, are they, you know, going through a breakup or they lost their job or they're dealing with like a lot of stress or depression or like, do people just like come in and check it out? 
I think it's all of the above. Like you never really know. You can't, I never really try to assume when I know what's going on in somebody's life. Um, mm-hmm. What I do as a, this, what I do as a yoga teacher as much as possible is I see the higher vision, the highest vision of them. So mm-hmm. even if someone might be having a bad day and they're like, you're a grumpy <laughs> face coming in. Yeah, it's I'm like, oh, okay, you're here. Yeah. So that's what we, I could talk later about the, the whole namaste thing you hear at the end of the yoga class. I mean, I really have a huge connection with that. And, uh, that's, that's kind of, that's my practice. The funda- that's the fundamental basis of my practice of yoga, but I'm sure we'll get more into that later. Yeah. What was, oh, what, when, the, when people come in, it's, probably, it's, it's all of the above, I'm sure. And then one person might just be coming in for one thing one time, and then maybe in a year, they're, they're coming back. For, yeah. for more that's the thing that's one of the things that separates yoga from most other physical activities too is it's really about the mind it uses the body mm-hmm. that's, that's why it's taken off so well in, in the west because in, in you know america and you know, the west we're uh we're pretty body obsessed you know yeah just, it, yeah all things physical really not just the body but just our possession that's a, one of my my uh, my theories on yoga is why uh it, it works really well is because even though it's not about the body it it kind of like in engages that part of our mind that can identifies with the body or yeah. identifies with being right or wrong or mm-hmm. I suck at this or i'm good at this it makes it wants to participate with that so yeah. then so- that's what go ahead no, I was going to ask, so, like, because there's so much of this, like, uh, like I got into um, meditation probably, uh, I think it's been about three years um, mm-hmm. now, and, you know, a lot of it is about that mind-body connection, but, you know, I just pretty much sit and I meditate. Well, I practice mindfulness meditation, and, you know, I'll, I'll do it, you know, walking or listening or, you know, just whatever I can bring my, my attention to and awareness, and, like, a lot of it is that, that like, mind-body connection. So one question I have, too, is, like, so as as a yoga practitioner, do you also meditate or is yoga your meditation? Yes and yes. <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, I find, I mean, I haven't taken a scientific poll, but it se- seems roughly that there's as many people who don't do yoga who meditate as actual people who do yoga on a regular basis mm-hmm. that that meditate. So I think that there's a pretty... I mean, you might have a little bit higher people who do identify themselves as yogis or whatever mm-hmm. do have a meditation practice, but I find there's a lot of people who do yoga almost every day that don't actually sit and meditate on a regular basis. And some of the thinking on on the physical, I mean, I, I I buy into this a lot. Like ultimately, the physical part is to prepare your body, you know, from outside in to be able to sit and notice. To yeah, notice, sit and med- meditate. Um, so again, to your question, uh, for me personally, I, I had spoke to this when how I got into yoga. I, I didn't really know my, my mind was making me miserable the way, mm-hmm. you know, um, basically. Um, and so I, I would have been one of the camp where I hear a lot of people say this all the time where it's like, oh, I can't meditate. I, I can't get my thoughts to stop. Right. Or, yeah. I can't deal with, I can't deal with these thoughts that come up when I'm not doing something else. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think that's another, that's the pathway where like, okay, well, the part of your mind that is, is giving you all of this stress and your, that your awareness to, and the, the thought that I can't do it. That's the part that is for some of us, for a lot of us is going to be like, okay, yeah, we'll do this. We'll do this yoga thing because a lot of the time it's like, oh, it's going to make you look better or it's going to make you be yeah. more, more having it together in your life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, that's interesting. But um, yeah, for me personally, I did, I'd say maybe three years ago myself, give or take, I started to get really um, disciplined to finding, <laughs> I actually slipped off. I didn't do it this morning, but uh, <laughs> I went to yoga instead. I didn't eat, I didn't meditate, I went to yoga. But um, yeah, so I, fairly, you know, almost every day, I, I take 10, 15 minutes at least. And then just okay. Open it meditate so i i got it all. and then over time the phys- the practice was really physical and i wasn't in a great you know i was okay physical shape i guess nor but then it was so hard so it was just like this thing where it was physical and then recently mm-hmm. i feel like even in the past year i've gone to deeper levels of meditation mm. with the practice 
Yeah. And uh, like, is there, is there like what, like I was mentioning, like I practice like mindfulness meditation. Is there a specific form of meditation that you do? Like what's your meditation practice look like? I, it's mindfulness and that's really how I think so. And I mean, I, I'm not as studied in just meditation as I am in, in the yoga itself, mm -hmm. the cross section I am. But um, yeah, um, it's, it's, I just basically, I, I sit and I'm like, all right, I'm here. I'm going to keep bringing, maybe I'll choose to take my attention just on my breath or maybe mm -hmm. I'll pick spots along my spine, I guess. Got it. Yeah. So just I finding like an anchor spot and then anytime a thought comes up, you just bring it back and just keep noticing yep. thoughts. Got yeah, it. And a lot of the time, this is what I tell my students who are, have trepidation and trying to meditate is I'll maybe, you know, maybe by like, if I'm doing 15 minutes, maybe by like minute 14, I'll start to get a couple seconds of space in between. I'm just okay with my mind. Just, you know, yeah. And this, might be interesting one thing that i'm I, i'm gonna get a little bit more a little better at doing it myself but i, I again recommend it to students is if you're trying to develop a meditation practice take 20 minutes aside the first 10 mi minutes don't actually start meditating get a piece of paper and anything where your mind's like i gotta mm. figure this out or i have a thought i want to work this out today or just like just a, you know write write down your thoughts try to attend to something even if it means like you know sending one email or something like yeah get, a free meditation time where you can be like, okay, now I can give my, myself this 10 minutes where those mm -hmm. things, still things might, might show up. Like, oh, no, no, you you needed 20 minutes with that. You're not, not. <laughs> yeah. But then it, I feel like that's even for someone trying to start it up. I think that's a good step to be like, okay, well, then maybe I can just allow my, my mind to like not attach on to wanting to do that thing. Yeah. So, Long story, long story short to your question is for me personally, I'm just, I'm just there. Just, I'm here. I'm sitting. Yeah. I'm going to notice my thoughts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to notice my breath. So yeah. So, so can you like, as somebody who has literally never tried yoga before, like, but as a meditator, like, can you kind of explain to me how, how yoga might help calm your mind or alleviate stress or anxiety or like, how does that work? It's in, I, I'm pretty sure it's almost the exact same way as meditation, except mm -hmm. now you have this anchoring thing where it's, instead of just asking you to just, just sit, you know, or, you know, you, you said you did, there's other forms of it too, walking meditation, mm -hmm. you know, you can actually draw, you don't have to like sit in a Lotus pose on a pillow. Yeah. 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 You're going to Buddha statue in the corner to meditate. <laughs> You can actually, with mindfulness meditation, you can be in a meditative state, at least. I don't know if, if there's actually, I don't know what you think, but maybe there's layers to it. Maybe it seems mm -hmm. like there's layers to it, but you can drop into a meditative state. But oh, to yeah. Answer your, no matter what you're doing. But mm -hmm. to answer your question, this this physical, this is a really holistic. So um, I feel like the more, I don't, I don't like, for some people, they're just like, you know, I don't, I got it. I got a meditative practice and it's making huge changes in my life. And I, I love it. And good for, the, for those of the, us who would have had trouble just sitting down and starting to meditate. It, it's great. And how, as to how, well, it, these each, let's look at it this way. Each yoga pose is almost like can serve as a mini scientific experiment or a metaphor. Mm. Okay. For, so it's, and it's all low stakes relatively speaking. So mm -hmm. we go into a pose and you're balancing on one leg and kicking your other leg back behind your head and you fall out of it. <laughs> Everyone's going to fall out of that pose hundreds and hundreds of times or even if they've been doing it for 10 years, they'll still fall out of it occasionally. So yeah. you start to notice how you react mm. to all these variables. And I practice a lot of hot yoga and teach it too. So that's another variable. The hot yeah. yoga, the hot, the heat in the room is actually scientists, scientists just doing more studies on it. That on uh, different elements of yoga, but that one element in particular, it's actually turns out that it's really good for your lungs, breathing in humidity stronger, okay. and the sweating is just you know it's not it's not a magic bullet like oh if you sweat every day you're going to be healthy that is right. not it of itself but it is it is something that does, is helpful. You yeah. have like this element of heat in a room where it's actually helping you. But it feels, but your mind comes in and says, "Oh no, this, get out! This is for you." Got know? it. Yeah. So it's almost like a little. Oh, and here's another one in the metaphor. Well, I could go two places with that, but um, in different spiritual studies that I, I'm becoming more and more familiar with, 
some of them over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of them will say like, and this is what you pointed to, I, I believe you just pointed to this, um, a lot of people with having a lot of suffering before they start to have awakening, before mm -hmm. they start to have progress. Well, in a way, you're kind of in, in a safe environment, a controlled environment, making mm -hmm. a very mini, very mini, um, what would you call it? Uh, a, a chance where you could suffer. Yeah. And, and a lot of us end up doing it over these stupid yoga poses. The <laughs> right. And, yeah. And the, the first thing I noticed, I think, when I started doing it for a couple of years, and like I have to, I was not really diagnosed, but I'm probably, probably whatever the diagnosis of, pretty severely depressed my whole entire life with mm -hmm. fluctuations between anxiety and depression my whole life mm -hmm. and uh, pretty miserable. Um, what I started to notice is that it was, you know, it's my thoughts for doing it. That, that can kind of break into a different thing, but I just wanted to say on this point that when I was first getting into it, I noticed I was stressing out and worrying about these poses. But then at the end, I was like, oh, well, I got all that time away from all these bigger problems that are right. me. Now, yeah. As your, as, your, as your practice develops, you start to see that there is really act, actually not that much. You only give as much significance and weight to all, all the problems. Yeah. Are. So there's there's a lot of interest. I don't know. I'm, I don't, I'm definitely not I'm, here. Yeah. I, I'm digging it. I'm digging it, though. Like, it's all, it started to make sense because I've read some books and stuff like that by, you know, meditators who practice yoga and stuff. But, um, you know, part of it too. And like, can you, like you said that kind of controlled suffering, like um, I teach a lot of my clients, I work at a drug and alcohol rehab and you know, a lot of them struggle with depression, anxiety, um, anger issues, some traumatic. And when I'm teaching meditation and we bring up certain emotions or anything like that, I kind of talk about it like a five pound weight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, like let's practice it here, like in this controlled environment. Think of something, think about maybe that guy who said something that you didn't like rather than, dealing with like your mom who you like hated your entire life or whatever it is like now we can start practicing and kind of building up that resistance you know but it also sounds like what we're talking about with yoga especially like when you did that thing like i can just imagine me falling over and top you know and a lot of meditation is noticing noticing judging myself noticing mm -hmm. frustration and not attaching to those things but just simply noticing them you know and mm -hmm. letting them be and then and yeah, and that makes sense because then it carries out through the rest of my day and not just when I'm meditating. Like I was uh, just talking to somebody and, and you touched on it earlier. Like so many people think that they're failing at meditating. Like meditating is supposed to clear your thoughts. And if you can't do that, you failed. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, it's just my, about my noticing thing, it. My saying is if you're trying to meditate, you are meditating. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so I dig that. So, um, I love that too. That they, I don't, someone may have said that to me. I'm not sure. Or just yeah. the sense of coined it. But I just love, I, I say that to myself all the time. Like, you got to do, did you do it? Oh, yeah, did you? Yeah. All you got to do is try. You yeah. And, I, and sometimes it makes me wonder, like, where these misconceptions, like, came from. Because I think they, like, think of that buddha i have like right there not the panda but the buddha you know and they're just like oh yeah. this is gonna be you're just gonna clear you're gonna find nirvana and it's like no man no it's just just it's sit the down same thing with notice. the poses too it's the well do you do you, the, the term ego yeah the mind the ego the ego wants to be good at everything right off the bat it never even wants to be well i mean some of us will be in beginner mind but like it, it's it's like a fear of public humiliation and it's mm -hmm. just I mean, it's, it all boils down to a very simplistic way of putting it that you want to either, the ego mm. wants to be right. It wants to be right. It yeah. wants to be right about this pose. Or even if that means, oh, I'm right, this isn't for me. Mm. So it, that's it can interesting. It I, yeah, that's interesting. I haven't thought about it like that. So uh, I did want to touch on because, okay, because you mentioned the namaste thing. And like, I hear it. I hear it all the time. And I have no idea what it means. So like, Explain, explain this to me, this namaste. So it points to um, a deeper philosophy predating yoga, the practice of yoga. Uh, Vedante, Vedante, I mean, I have to get it. I'm not very good at Sanskrit words either, but uh, <laughs> it, points, it, it means non-duality. Now, on a very non-duality, I'm not going to really get, I hopefully not going to get too deep into that, but on a very practical experiential level and this is what i feel like what happened to me is um well i'm gonna have to 
or maybe expand out to bring it back in. Um, mm -hmm. Around the same time that I tried yoga for the first time, I had this experience, and that's a whole different, other, it, 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 potentially another interview, but I had this experience where it dawned on me that I did have, I actually did love all being, all human mm -hmm. community. And uh, with that realization, there was a huge, you know, awakening. But then I needed something to be able to actually be, practice it, experience it. So even though that I intellectually came to that thought where, I was like, oh, I love, I love all people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't, you know, feeling that, recognizing that, uh, mm -hmm. living that. A lot, almost all. It was, it was pretty much how it was before this thing that happened. So then going back you know the, uh, going back to your original question what is the moment today it, i mean you'll hear the yoga teacher at the end of the class it's the light in me recognizes the light in you and that's the very mm. general of what it means but a lot of even yoga teachers never really got exposed to or found you know get into what is the light you know mm -hmm. what is that light we're speaking of so what i believe that light is is conscious awareness um, and then the whole non-duality thing I brought up is uh, basically that philosophy propose, proposes that we're all actually connected and we never left mm -hmm. each other. And it yeah. was a cat experience, the separation, the suffering of the world for us to re remember and to come back to each yeah. other. So yeah. when no. you say the light, the light is, um, I, I, the words I like to associate with it is loving kindness, unconditional love, there peace. You go. Yeah. Boy, um, I, I feel like laughter, laughter is part of it. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a symptom of joy and it's a, um, it's a sign of healing and a symptom of joy. Yeah. Um, so when you, and then the other factor of it, which leads to the non-dualism is what I am experiencing. This is why I still say it after every class. And that's why I'm talking about it right now is mm -hmm. the more I can, you know, pass any expectate, any judgment any separation and just like i said i was i see the highest vision of my student that's namaste I, yeah so the more i actually see people like that and it goes way beyond these things being but yeah part of um the more i see that the more i feel it it's mm -hmm. like it's completely connected it's reciprocal it's like yeah. one, another way of looking at it is like you can't truly you can't truly have something unless you give or you're willing to give it. You, you mm -hmm. don't really know something unless you teach it and like mm -hmm. teaching and you're all yeah. always teaching. So it's, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a way that's where everything, the yoga practice, the meditation practice supports my ability to namaste. So let me ask you this, how much, so like, and this is something that I, I, I came to kind of this like realization is that it's easy for me to kind of do that with my clients, right? And like you, your yoga students, how is it, do you find it difficult to do that? Like just in the everyday world, going to the grocery store or the gas station or you're driving and somebody somebody like cuts you off or you're like, namaste or like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, does that like, kind of make sense? Uh, like, that's funny because I, I talk about, that's, that's a great example. Um, less and less, I realized in the past, I was driving around not only anxious, but angry, like beyond angry. Like I right. wanted to like one thing and like, so, and then I'd link this into balancing poses too, because what I, what I noticed and this is what you had mentioned a moment ago about working with your clients, it's mm -hmm. um, what yoga can help you do is it helps you. This is the mind body connections, like a buzzword that, you know, I don't think a lot of people really even unpack, but yeah. really what this is, it's like this thing happened. You notice how you feel in your body. You notice what your thoughts around it are. And mm -hmm. then you kind of step out of it for a second, be like, do I want to feel that way? Yeah. Can I be okay feeling that in my body? And, and then the key to all of it is really breathing, in my opinion. So like anytime yeah. I, but anyway, going back to the traffic. <laughs> I, like, so I'm still not to that point where it's not, <laughs> where I still feel it. Like I get that first, I get that first, Sting of annoyance or that sting of oh, that person, yeah. that maniac going five miles under the speed limit right now. Yeah. Um, and then, then I, I'm able sooner and sooner to just step into that second response.
No, uh, but but yeah, like that's that's something that I try to teach people about. Like just developing a practice. What happens is is that you start to notice it. You start to notice that in, that initial kind of you said like that little sting of irritation. And now we can step out of it and we have a choice. Like mm -hmm. how do I want to respond to this? But so many of us we get into this autopilot and people snap at people. They they argue. They fight. They yell at a stranger. You know all these things. But the more you start developing be, this thing, had to be done. They they were wrong. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And uh, like. Yeah. 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 Like uh I, I was just teaching my clients about meditation the other day and they they said, How do you how do you know it's when it's working? How do you know when it's working? And I tell them, I said, chances are a lot of the people in your life are gonna notice it's working before you do. Like your husband or your wife or your kids might be like, You're not as much of a jerk as you used to be. You know what I mean? Because you're you're learning how to respond to this stuff in a you know, in a loving kindness matter rather than snapping off your basic primal instincts uh, but yeah and you touched on like when you were talking the namaste like and you mentioned loving kindness that's where i i find it too like it really just helps me develop empathy because i i think you know now more than ever not to get too deep in that is we're so disconnected you know what i mean it's just those are those people these people those that's a stranger and stuff and the more i practice any kind of loving kindness i'm just like this is another human this is a person with their own struggles, their own emotions, their own past, their own history. And it, it helps me, it helps me cut them some slack, you know, because we're all dealing with this human thing, you know? Yeah, the, even if a step further, the namaste would be like, that's not even a different, that's me. That's me, yeah. someone, someone slightly born in a slightly different time in a different space. Like, mm -hmm. but in the grand scheme of the universe, the, the universe is so vast that they're, they're that space doesn't even show up as a numeral, you know what I right? mean? Right, yeah, exactly. Like, that's me, and, if, and it, that's helps build empathy too, is like, you know what, even if I don't like what that person's doing right now, and it could be something that almost all of us could agree, like, oh, that person's beating their kids right now. I wouldn't, mm. I would never do that. Uh, <laughs> that's a different, that, that's, a, that's a different tension altogether about yeah. the not projection, but that person, you know, I can, I could very easily, I, you know what, if I was in their exact same shoes and had the same experiences, I would be doing the exact same thing. And that's, yeah. That's true of with every single person. Mm, you know, that's interesting. That helps empathy too, is like, you can't hold someone, you, I mean, they did what their level of consciousness mm -hmm. was at at that point. So, yeah. you know, I mean, this, this is a little bit, this isn't something you would introduce to someone just getting into all this. Yeah, it's, right. <laughs> it, it, it's the key to never have any grievances or or hate or, or fear against any other person. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's cool because, uh, you know, a lot of people who are going to be watching this or listening to this, you know, a lot of them are, you know, going to be in, being introduced. But, like, I know when I first started, I liked hearing these conversations because it kind of let me know, like, oh, wow, that's where I could be eventually. Like, I can get to that place. Like, it sounded crazy at first, like, when I first got started in all this stuff and just working on my own mental health. But, like, I, I saw people were happier. I saw people were able to treat others with more empathy. And I was like, how do you do that? Because maybe I can do that, too. You know what I mean? And there's um, huge payoff in doing it, too. I mean, and again, coming from my past, I was walking around miserable. My, my mantra in my late teens and my early 20s was, I hate people. Like, I hate that person. Like, that person's stupid. That person's stupid. That, well, my friend's okay. But yeah. I was so miserable. And, right. and now, I mean, again, I had to get to that level of suffering, apparently, yeah. in this lifetime to, to find the opposite. But mm -hmm. I found the opposite now. And it's like, I walk around, I was like, man, I just love people. I just, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, a payoff it's a it's a huge payoff i mean if you just even want to think about it you can do it for selfish reasons like i want to feel good i'm just gonna love everybody <laughs> exactly so uh so one thing uh we got a couple minutes left one thing i wanted to ask you okay now that i'm finally talking to a yoga teacher so as you can see i'm a pretty big dude i have been yeah. making the ex i've been making the excuse forever that i can't practice yoga because i'm a bigger guy like uh -huh. i need you to sell me on the fact that maybe i can like oh, where would I, where, can. where not, should i get started i would like the since you're already in, in, in a uh, meditation mindset uh, maybe just doing ones that are more geared towards a meditation but the the type of there's two main types of act of physical yoga 
that I practice, um, one, the more ubiquitous one is, is called like you'll hear it called vinyasa or flow yoga. And mm-hmm. that's the one that's a lot more like calisthenics, like a Pilates type of thing where, you know, yoga's been around for a lot longer than Pilates, but yeah. It's gonna be a tangent. The, most of the yoga poses you see nowadays are just developed over the last 200 years and most of them over the last 40 years. Oh, um, wow. A lot, not all of them. Maybe I'm just going to say roughly maybe like 16 positioning, all leading to lotus pose, basically, mm-hmm. were developed over the years so people could sit and meditate. And you know, it goes back 3,000, at least 2,000 years. Um, mm-hmm. But in the, in the uh, 1920s or so, a lot of the modern day yoga poses you see in a yoga class came from the imperialist armies in India, mm. you know, the Dutch and the, the Dutch and the English, the yoga, the yogi were like watching them do their routines. Like oh, this stuff could be useful in, in teaching the 11 year old or 11 year old pu- pupils. Yoga. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's where all the, so the poses, you know, uh, if just see it as like, I'm going to not, not just, I'm not going to, I'm going to do my, my meditation practice, but I'm going to move a little bit today. I'm going to get, I'm gonna get some, you don't have to do it like they like it looks like on Instagram. You don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To... I've seen I've seen your Instagram. I'm like, I can't do that, Michael. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. like you said, um, when you were like you were working with your cl- clients, some about taking them to the point where they can deal with it and yeah. then practicing it there. That's what I'm going to suggest. For oh. You to do. And a lot of people they don't think do that. that. We're in gym mentality. We're an American. You know. Get, <laughs> Maybe I don't know what the heck we're in right now. We're in <laughs> yeah. It, it makes people like I gotta do the fight. Do right. it. Yeah. No, you find the spot where ah, I'm noticing things happening. This is this is a little bit challenging. Can I be calm? Can I breathe calm here? I can breathe calm here. Let me try it here. So got it. That's the way to do it. And I would really recommend um, hot yoga. And the type of hot yoga is. The, the guy is no longer, you know, he's had, he's, he's had his problems with the way he's behaved, apparently, you know, um, allegedly. But um, the Bikram yoga is a really good way to come into it because it's <laughs> unlike the flow yoga, they're longer held poses and you get space, you get breaks in between the poses. So if someone mm. just starts to find their body, they have time to come into the pose. They have time to hold the pose. They have time to come out of the pose. They have time to, re- you know, recalibrate in between the poses so that's, but at the same time they're blasting you with heat and humidity so yeah. you someone doing it for the first time and somebody like me who's been practicing that style for eight and a half years you know there's the 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 body can just keeps cha- you know the body just keeps providing a slightly different scientific experiment for you to do the yoga got so it okay when you practicing next together you're going to be having your experience and it doesn't matter what looks i mean our ego thinks it matters, but it doesn't matter what it looks like. You're going to be practicing yoga. And then with the heat and humidity, both yeah. of us, by the end of the class, we're going to be laying there like, oh, something happened here. Yeah. Whereas you know, there's, especially, I think people just trying to find more relaxation, you know, more of a meditation in their life, you know, more of a gentle style is fine. And I, you know, I'd like to do a gentle style. I probably should do one once. Yeah. When I practice on my own, it, it, it veers gentle. When I get into yeah. a room, I'm like, let's let's do the work, you know. Let's yeah. do the work. Let's see, Got it. Let's so this, this yeah. Time. So yeah, and kind of like you said, like I think that's where my issue has been, like because I get that gym mentality where it's like push it, push it to the limits, like go crazy, you know. And like uh, I like how you use the word gentle, and it's just kind of like just checking my limits, you know, and then eventually like progressing and all that kind of stuff. How easy can you do this? Because that's like basically. Like, <laughs> And, yeah. and, and really a lot of times when our body and our minds are like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to try. And then you don't, you don't actually try. How can you, how easy can you do it while you're still fully trying? And then mm. it could be different. Like yeah. one week you just get a tight shoulder out of nowhere. So it might be a little bit different, you know? Got so it. Okay. I'm willing, I'm willing to find out in, this, in the present moment what it's going to be like. Got so it. That's all. It, teaches, it teaches you so much, you know? It, yeah. It, present moment it teaches you possibly how to enter states of flow cool cool all right now i so you got my word and everybody else watching or listening you got my word i'm going to try this thing i might even document it um but yeah it's it's something i i really want to do to kind of step up well how about this when i come down to vegas let's let's go to a yoga class together oh yeah you're coming to vegas okay uh, hopefully you're and i'm going to be in um like 
I think it's uh, like 14th of February around around Valentine's Day. Around Valentine's Day. That weekend, that weekend. Oh. I think it's like the 16th and the 17th. Okay. February. Yeah. Yeah. No, that'd be awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'll be a whole nother video. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, Michael, we are out of time. So do me a favor for everybody who's watching out there, let them know where they can find more information about you and what you got going on in your world. Sure. Um, the best way, especially if you're not in Pittsburgh to just see, see what's going on and to hear more about some of the things I brought up is on my Instagram. You know, you, you'll see me doing the, the yoga poses. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, it, they're, they're fun to watch. They're nice to look at, but I, the words with it is really mm -hmm. what I'm, I really, that keeps me doing it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not as, as the years go on, I'm like, I'm sick of, man, I'm sick of looking at myself, but uh, <laughs> the words. So the, to answer your question, it would be check, check out my Instagram, Michael Miracles Yoga, all one word. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you need a hashtag in front of that or not, but just check <laughs> Yeah, follow me on Instagram, and you know I, I get in about three days a week, and there's there's useful. I like to call it practical spirituality. What we just talked about today is what I would call you know we could call it mindfulness, but cool. I call it practical spirituality. So that Instagram and um, yeah, and from there my my website as well, Michael Miracles. Got it. And I have an ebook I released a few months ago with more, oh cool more of just that. It's like a day by day like you know inspirational blurb to read maybe a page maybe just a paragraph oh cool so that's that's available on my site as well so uh if you're in beautiful. pittsburgh check out my site and come to one of my classes that's the best yeah. way beautiful awesome so cool and yeah everybody who's watching or listening i will have links to his instagram and his website as well as a link on his website to his ebook it'll be down in the description but Michael, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come chat with me. And we're going to link up and we're going to talk and we're going to meet up when you come down to Vegas next month. All right. That'll be fun. That'll be, that'll be really fun. I think. Cool. All right. All right, everybody. But yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.